السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا شفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا الله Today's session will focus on the fifth outer action that draws us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gets us more prepared for the day when we will leave this dunya to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This outer action is reciting the Holy Quran. Quran is uh, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, it is divided into 114 chapters, surah, and each chapter, each surah consists of individual verses, ayat. So these these suar these chapters vary in length some surahs consist of a few lines while other surahs run for many pages and each 20 page of the uh, of the quran is called a juz so some surahs consist of more than one juz. For example, Surah Al-Baqarah is about two and a half juz. While Surah Inna A'tainak Al-Kawthar, Surah Al-Kawthar, is one and a few words, one line and a few words. SubhanAllah, reciting the Qur'an is an honorable act. You are reading the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is an honor. It is a, a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a chance to his servants to talk to him using his words. So when you want to talk to Allah, the best way is to read his words, which are revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through Jibreel alayhi salam. And we, we all know that uh, the Quran is a complete program. It's a complete school. It's a complete system for our lives. So. When we go to school, we learn. And when we read the Quran, we learn. We learn the teachings. We learn the rules. We learn what's, uh, what's prohibited. We, we, we learn what's uh, um, permissible. We learn what we can do, what we cannot do, what is righteousness, what is faithfulness. We know everything through the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever we read the Quran and we pass by the ayah that starts by Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu then we have to pay close attention to what's after these words. Why? Because what's after these words these words are Oh those who believe so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling those who believe in him. And what's he going to tell them? He's going to give them an order or to prohibit something that they cannot do. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu aqimu salah. O you who believe, perform your prayers. So 
Of course, the whole Quran is filled up with these examples. So the Quran provides insights into almost all aspects of our lives. And Quran always brings the reciter, the one who, who, who reads the Quran, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no book more significant than the Holy Quran in, the, in a Muslim's life. Because this is the book of Allah that includes his words, it includes messages, it includes, it, it includes a whole program that when someone follows, then he will be on the straight path. And the straight path will lead us to the high heavens. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Quran to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over 1400 years ago. And <clears throat> there are millions of copies of the Quran circulating in the world. And these copies are all identical. There is no change in a single letter. No mistake in any single word. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that he himself will guard this book. And in Surah Al-Hijr, ayah number 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, surely it's we who have revealed the Quran. And surely it's we who are its guardians. So, inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. This is, these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will be saved till the day after. Not a single alteration, not a single addition, not a single deletion. Nothing will happen to this book. And do you know how or why, how, how this will happen? It's not only the prints. All over the, the world since the time of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam till today and till the day after there are people who are blessed with the ability to memorize the whole Quran. So the Quran is protected in the hearts of people. So whoever recites to someone who is a hafiz, then he will immediately figure out any single small mistake with the recitation. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he revealed the Quran to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that happened over, over years. And every year, Jibreel alayhi salam used to uh, review the Quran with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once every year. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, something, something happened during the last year of his life. And he said, Inna Jibreela kana yu'aridhuni al-Qur'ana kulla sanatin marra. Wa innahu a'aridhuni al-'aama marratayn. Wa la arahu illa hadar ajali. Every year, Jibreel used to receive, to revise, used to revise the Qur'an with me once only. But this year, he has done so twice. 
And I think this pretends my death. And there are if you, two, two, two ayahs, two surahs. No, one of them is an ayah, the other one is a surah. That when they were revealed, Sayyidina Abu Bakr cried, cried. The uh, ayah is, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا Today I have perfected your religion and uh, 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 and uh, uh, so when when uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr heard this ayah, he cried. The other ayah that made him cry, the other surah, was um, so the first one was an ayah, one verse. The other one was a whole surah, which was surat. Uh, um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Surah Al-Fatih. Ida jaa nasrullahi wal-fatih wa ra'ayta al-nasa yadkhuluna fi deeni allahi afwaja fasabbih bihamdi rabbika wa astaghfirh innahu kana tawwaba. So in, uh, in this surah, Ida jaa nasrullahi wal-fatih, um, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that uh, this is Surah Al-Nasr. Uh, uh, Allah says, uh, when, when the victory of Allah has come and the conquest, Nasrullahi wal Fatih, the victory and the conquest, the conquest of Mecca. And you see the people entering into the religion of Allah in multitudes, in groups. Then exalt Allah with praising, exalt with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for, for ask forgiveness of him. Indeed, he is ever accepting of repentance. So when this surah was revealed, Sayyidina Abu Bakr cried because he understood that this is the announcement of the death of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the death of Sayyidina Muhammad is close and it's, it's near. Now, one of the miracles of the Quran is that reading it again and again never bores the, re bores the reader. Reading a book, any book more than a few times, no matter how much you love it, will make you get bored of it. Finally, you memorized it, so why would you read it again? Except reading the Quran. The more you read it, the more you feel you want to read. The more every single time you read a khatam, you start a new khatam. So the heart gets connected to the Quran. And when the heart, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds that, looks at your heart and finds his book in your heart and finds the love of the one whom his book was revealed to in your heart, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then he will be happy with this heart. And you will ask, how, how can we raise our children? How can we make our children hafiz? You start with young age, when they are still young. Enroll them in, in schools for, for, for memorizing the Quran. Get them prepared to be of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love them, love their heart because it's filled with the light of the nur of the Holy Quran. Now, if we ask ourselves, okay, what are the benefits of reciting the uh, Quran daily? Why should we recite Quran? Before answering this 
important question. I will, I will emphasize that if you want your heart to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get your heart connected to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get your heart connected to uh, the, uh, uh, to the to the word of Allah. So why? What are the benefits of reciting the Quran? First of all, the heart must be firmly uh, firmly attached firmly uh, in love, firmly uh, secured with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the heart is, then the body and the speech and your words will do the same. When your heart is applying, is working on the ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you feel that you're reading about being faithful. You cannot not be faithful. You are reading about being righteous. You feel that you have to be righteous. You're reading about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overwatching, over you, watching you. Then you want Allah to see you on wor a worship state. You don't want Allah to see you in, in an obedience, uh, disobedience state. No. So the the, the Quran, the, the, the chapters uh, of the Quran will protect you. When you when you memorize the Quran, then the Quran is the one who protects you. And when you read the Quran, what will you find? You will find stories of the prophets, stories of the uh, messengers, stories of the previous nations. And why are these stories mentioned? It's not just a book of stories, but... It's mentioned so that we conclude the wisdom behind each and every story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in the Quran. So when you will get closer to Allah when you read his words and you calm yourself, you calm your soul if, if you are in any problem by reciting the Quran. So you feel the, the powerful and the exceptional impact of the verses of the Quran, especially when you understand the meanings behind each verse. So when you read the Quran, you read the tafsir of the ayat, the explanation of the ayat, why these ayahs were revealed, what's the wisdom? So what is the lesson behind these ayahs? So when you understand, then when you re recite the Quran, you feel, you feel that the Quran brings tranquility. It is. It, it has a special, outstanding impact on the heart and on the soul. It gives. It gives the reciter peace. It gives him comfort. See, the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whenever he had any problem, he would he would uh, uh, start praying. And when you pray, then you rec recite the Quran. So the Quran gives you comfort. Why? Because it nurtures the heart. It nurtures the soul. It eliminates anxiety. When you read it and you understand it, there will be no doubts. You will feel that 
it's a complete system to guide you to the right path to enlighten your heart and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ra'ad in Ayah 13 surely the remembrance of Allah do hearts find comfort in the remembrance of Allah so this is in uh, Surah Al-Ra'ad and this is Ayah 13 when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, revealed these words, Allah understands, Allah gives people tranquility. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put ease in your heart. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say in in one of the narrations uh, ما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتدارسون القرآن إلا ما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة وغشيتهم الرحمة وحفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله في من عنده Subhanallah, what an amazing hadith. So, uh, Allah, no people, no people gather uh, for, uh, or any group of people uh, that assemble in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in a group to recite the book of Allah, to learn it and teach it, to understand it, except tranquility descends upon them and mercy envelops them. The angels will surround them. And Allah mention, will mention them amongst those who are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what, what uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember them with a, with a group who are better than those who, who are together. These are the angels. And subhanAllah, there will be a reward for reciting the Quran. So reciting the Quran will make you gain more rewards that increase your scale in the hereafter. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qara'a harfan min kitab Allah falahu bihi hasana wal hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha. So whoever recites a letter of the book of Allah will be credited with a good deed. And a good deed is multiplied into 10. I do not say that the word alif lam mim is counted as one, one, uh, one letter, but Alif is one letter, Lam is one letter, and Mim is one letter. So the more you re read the Quran, the more reward you will get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Sayyid Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, Ask, ask people uh, to recite and to increase their relationship with the Quran. 
And we all know that Quran is the best protector from the for the reciters. It saves from the devil. So once you read Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah تقضو الشيطان ثلاثة ثلاثة أيام. When you recite Surah Al-Baqarah, the devil will be outcasted for three days out of your home. And this is why the people of Allah read Surah Al-Baqarah at least twice every week. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, Verily, everything has a summit, and the summit of the Quran is Surah Al-Baqarah. And whoever recites it in his house at night, Shaitan will not enter his house for three nights. And whoever recites it during the day, Shaitan will not enter his house for three days. Uh, also, of the benefits of reciting the Quran, oh, we know that uh, there are uh, certain surahs uh, in the Quran that have special merits. But before entering, before talking about this, I want to emphasize something very important that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, has talked about. And he, when, when uh, he was talking to his companions about the Quran, he was telling them that Quran is an intercessor, intercessor for the one who is reading it. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, recite the Quran. اقرأ القرآن فإنه يأتي شفيعا يوم القيامة. Before, so recite the Quran for it will come as an intercessor for its reciters on the day of resurrection. And of course, Sayyidina Muhammad uh, encouraged his uh, companions to read the Quran and he said, the one who has devoted to the Quran will be told to recite and ascend. So يقول سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يوم القيامة يقال لقارئ القرآن اقرأ وارتقي فإن منزلتك عند آخر آية تقرأها أو كما قال سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم So recite the Quran because he will reach his abode when he comes to the last verse he recites. And some people will say, well, we are not Arab speakers. So when we, we find it difficult to read the Quran, So what happened? There will be double reward for reciting the Quran hardly. So many non-Arab Muslims find it difficult to read the Quran because they are not fluent in Arabic or sometimes they do not know Arabic. And subhanAllah, there are people who can read the Quran and they cannot read anything in Arabic, Arabic language. They cannot read any other book. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to those who, who read it with difficulty. So he, he, he said, Whoever reads the one who is proficient in the recitation of the Quran will be with the honorable and obedient scribes, the angels. And 
And the one who recites the Quran and finds it difficult to recite, and, and he is doing his best because he feels there is a special attachment to the Quran, then he, so he does his best to recite it in the best way, he will have two rewards. فَلَهُ أَجْرَانِ So you don't have any uh, excuse that, okay, I don't speak the language. I, I. So there will be help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who, uh, who, who want to learn his words. There will be divine help. And they will, they themselves will see, will say, oh, when I started, it was so difficult, but now I'm more fluent. It gets easier. So the more you practice it, the more you find it e e easier. So the, as we mentioned that of the benefits of uh, reciting the Quran, it guides us to the straight path. So it teaches us the ethical values that we should follow and what good deeds that we should do so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be satisfied with us. Now, if we talk a little bit about the secrets for reciting the Quran, or what should we do? What are the etiquettes for reciting the Quran? There are some uh, uh, important things that we have to, to mention. And the, first of all, when we want to read the Quran, we have to, to remember that we are not reading any book. It's the book of Allah. So we have to read it with, uh, while we are on uh, wudu state. It's, it's better to be, to have wudu, to uh, read the Quran and to read it uh, with respect, to read it clearly, to try to understand it. Now, some people will say, okay, if I don't have wudu, then I don't read the Quran. I say no. And you can, you can read the Quran. Of course you can. When you go to bed, you might have wudu or you might not have wudu. You have your word of Quran before you, you fall asleep. And we will talk about this uh, uh, which is, uh, what's, what's the word of the Quran? What's the routine of the Quran? You read Ayatul Kursi, you read the three quls, and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you make dua, and this, this is your word of Quran before you go to bed. Now, you can be on a wudu state or you, you might not be having a wudu state. That's fine. So someone might ask, when is the best time to read the Quran? And I would say at night during Qiyam al-Layl. Why? There's no one, nothing to distract you. You are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 100%. Children are asleep. Uh, everyone is sleeping. You are alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doesn't everyone who is in love like to be alone with, it, with the one whom he loves? We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Qiyam al-Layl is a manifestation of our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what do you talk to your lover? You, 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 you say the words that he loves. 
And the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves is his words, the Quran. So when you read the Quran at night, your heart is clear. So you receive the light of the Quran way more than when you read it during the day and uh, this person is talking to you and you are answering that one. So at night, you are alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, there are, now we come to the uh, uh, point that we mentioned earlier, that there are certain surahs in the Quran that have special uh, benefits or special merits. So what are these these uh, stories? What are these these um, ayahs? What are these surahs? I want to start with the very first surah of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. Abu Sa'id said, "Qala li Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam." ألا أعلمك أعظم سورة في القرآن قبل أن تخرج من المسجد؟ فأخذ بيدي فلما أردنا أن نخرج قلت بلى يا رسول الله قال قلت يا رسول الله إنك قلت لأعلمنك أعظم سورة في القرآن قال رسول الله الحمد لله رب العالمين and he recited that the surah, هي السبع المثاني والقرآن العظيم الذي أتيته. So Abu Sa'id was once with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, shall I teach you the greatest surah in the Quran before you leave the mosque? And then he took, he took uh, him by the hand. And when they, when we were, they were walking, they were, uh, they, uh, Abu Sa'id said to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, Ya Rasulullah, what is it? And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. He recited Surah Al-Fatiha. And he said, this is As-Sab'u Al-Mathani. And by As-Sab'u Al-Mathani, so Surah Al-Fatiha is called As-Sab'u Al-Mathani. So another name for Surah Al-Fatiha. And what does this mean? What does these two words mean? Seber is seven, and the methani is the repeated. So it's the seven ayahs, the seven uh, of repeated ayahs. So this is called Sab'u al methani And we repeat Surah Al Fatiha in every prayer. So it's a seven ayahs that are repeated. A lot. And so it is Sab'u al-Mathani and the, the great Quran which is given to me. How come that Surah Al-Fatiha is the great Quran? The whole, it is said that the, the, uh, uh, those who explain the Quran, Al-Mufassirun, they said that Surah Al-Fatiha talks about is a summary for the whole Quran. And books and books and books were uh, uh, written about just the tafsir, the explanation of Surah Al-Fatiha. Subhanallah. Again, another another hadith that gives us um, the benefits of other surahs. Abu Dardai radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, من حفظ عشر آيات من أول سورة الكهف عصم من الدجال وفي رواية من آخر سورة الكهف. So Abu Darda رضي الله عنه reported that Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever commits, whoever memorizes the first ten ayahs of سورة الكهف the first ten ayahs of سورة الكهف will be protected from the Dajjal from the Antichrist. And in another relation, in narration, it is the, the last 10 ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf. 
subhanallah. So, uh, another, uh, another surah, let's say, let's talk about surah al-mulk. Surah al-mulk, تحمي صاحبها من عذاب القبر. So, uh, Surah Al-Mulk protects the one who reads it from the punishment of the grave after death. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, read Surah Al-Mulk to protect yourself from the punishment, punishment of the grave. Again, another uh, surahs, of course, each and every surah has some has secrets and secrets and lights and insights. But I'm just talking about just a few a few examples. Um, from the. Uh, uh, we, we know that when Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, went with Al Isra wal Mi'raj for the journey of Al Isra wal Mi'raj, he came back with two ayahs, the last two ayahs of Surah Al Baqarah, and they were given to him as a gift to his Ummah. So, Anzal Allahu ayataini min kunuzi al Jannah. These are uh, the last two ayahs of uh, Surah Al-Baqarah are uh, uh, like um, great treasure from the treasure of paradise. Those who recite Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran, what is the secret for that? What's the benefit of that? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال يأتي القرآن وأهله الذين يعملون به في الدنيا تقدمه سورة البقرة وآل عمران تأتيان كأنهما ضيابتان وبينهما شرق أو كأنهما غمامتان سوداوان أو كأنهما ظلة من طير صواف تجادلان عن صاحبهما so, Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran shall be in front of it. So they will come, those two surahs, as if they were they 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 were shades between which there is illumination, or as if they were two shades, two shady clouds. Or as if there were shadows of lines of birds. So what would they come? They would come arguing on, the, on behalf of those who recite them. And we all know Surah Al-Mulk. Surah Al-Mulk. Tujadilu an sahibiha yawm al-qiyamah. Wa tamna azab al-qabr. So Surah Al-Mulk uh, will argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment and it will save the person who recites it from the punishment of the grave. Surah Al-Waqi'ah An Ibn Mas'ud قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قرأ سورة الواقعه في كل ليلة لم تصبه فاقة أبدا so Ibn Mas'ud said, whoever recites Surah Al-Waqi'ah every night, every night, uh, will never be afflicted by want, will not be poor. And Ibn Mas'ud himself used to order his daughters to recite Surah Al-Waqi'ah every night. Now, some people would say, but we cannot read. So what do we do? And uh, as I just mentioned, just learn the alphabet. 
learn the uh, how to connect uh, the letters, how to form words, how to read them. When you finish this this first step, then uh, there are uh, uh, there are plenty of resources available online that provide uh, recitation. So listen, listen to reciters. And I would recommend a very important uh, page, which is tenzil.net. That's T-A-N-Z-I-L dot N-E-T, tenzil dot net. This is an amazing website. It has the page of the Quran. And uh, to the left, it has uh, a lot uh, that, uh, e that uh, uh, so many information. The first, the first thing to the left of the page, you will have search. It's a, it has a search engine. If you know a word in the Quran and you write it, then it will it will give you all the ayahs that contain this that that in that has this word that you are searching, and it it will give you a list of all the ayahs, and you can click on any one uh, any certain uh, verse so to read the word that is in the this ayah and next to the search engine you will have uh, another way to search if you know the the surah and you know what ayah is the word you can just uh, uh, click on that and below that there is a recitation and if you click on the arrow you will find a lot of reciters. Uh, maybe you can find at least at least twenty reciters, or maybe more, uh, and you can listen to them. And below that, there is a translation if you want to understand what what you are reading, reciting, or what you are hearing. So this is an important, a very useful, helpful. Uh, website it is called tenzil.net and you can use it as one of the resources that is online and if you know how to recite then the next step is to memorize one time uh one of my students who was uh, working on a tajweed ijaza, uh, she was reciting the whole Quran um, and uh, she was uh, looking for to get a tajweed ijaza. One time she said to me, can you, I, I, I want to memorize, can you test me? And I said, yes, uh, by the way, this person is a non-Arab speaker. She doesn't speak Arabic. She doesn't know how to speak Arabic. But she knows how to read the Quran. This is a special blessing. And there are many people like this. But what's, what's so different in her? When she said, can you test me? And I said, of course. So the next time she came, uh, she started reading the Quran by heart. She started first page, second page, third page, fourth page, not a single mistake. And when she, when she stopped, I said to her, can you tell me what is the secret? You are not an Arab speaker. So when you, when you read, you do not understand the meanings of what you are reading. Normally, Arab speakers, when they memorize, they connect the words together. They connect the stories together. How are you doing it? And she said, I read each page 100 times. 50 
on one day 50 times and the next day I review it 50 times until by the end of the 100 times that I read it I I can see it why I am while I am closing my eyes I can see it in front of me I can see the page in front of me while I am closing my eyes imagine the the connection the the faithfulness the truthfulness of the sincerity of how connected the heart of this person is to the Quran and subhanallah so there are so many ways that you can get yourself connected to the Quran and as I mentioned if you want your children to be connected to the Quran start with them when they are young subhanallah the words of Allah just hit your heart even if you don't understand them when you listen to a reciter who reads beautifully from from his heart you feel that it's not him who is reading it's his heart who is reading so you feel that there is a connection between your heart and the words that you are listening to and you feel that there is a special light that has got into your heart this is the secret of the quran this is the miracle of the quran which was revealed to sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 1400 years ago and it will continue till the day after and those who re recite the quran the words of allah will be highly rewarded on the day of judgment وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته